Um, hello? Yeah. I'll be in the party in like 20 minutes. Okay. No aliens? Okay. Sorry, alien. You can't go. The brouhaha over Comcast that started last fall happened when some people noticed that if they were starting BitTorrent sessions to distribute files, the sessions would just shut down. They couldn't understand why. It turns out that what Comcast was doing was looking for patterns of network use that indicated that BitTorrent was in use, and then sending uh, packets called reset packets, which would say essentially to one part of the conversation in the voice of the other part of the conversation, I need to hang up now. That's what Comcast was doing, and they said they needed to do it because of congestion in their cable lines caused by use of the BitTorrent protocol. I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. All providers of high-speed internet access want the ability to do a lot of deep packet inspection so they have a lot of information about what's crossing their networks and then be able to price differentiate perfectly based on what people are doing. It's like the way a cell phone works. You pay differently for different services that you access using your cell phone. They'd like to take that model and apply it to internet use. What were you thinking? This internet bill is too high. Don't you know every Google search is 15 cents and MySpace is a dollar? And don't get me started on the uploading. Let's imagine that there were, like the old days, there were thousands of internet service providers. As soon as Comcast starts to block and word gets out about that, then people could take their business across the street to a competitor. But sometimes there's only the cable provider or only the phone company. Sometimes there's neither. So there isn't really a, a genuine marketplace to take your business across the street. The problem here is you just suggested it. Two companies, Brooklyn, Cablevision, phone company. Bronx, Cablevision, phone company. It's not a lot of competition. We have more competition for bottled water, which is essentially the same, than you have for how to do your connection to the internet, which is basically the foundation of how you're going to do business in the 21st century. It's nuts. It's nuts. The public obligations that had been protected when we first built the telecommunications network by regulation have been removed. And so they've privatized this asset that was built under those protections and shirked the public obligations. And so we got the worst of the worst the absolute worst of both worlds, an unregulated monopoly in telecommunications and basically a duopoly in broadband telecommunications. A duopoly, as they said, is a little bit better than a monopoly, but not by much. I think it goes back to your, your previous question as to why competition is good. Um, I think uh, if we were a monopoly or if Cablevision was a monopoly, they could probably charge whatever they wanted until you know, they got enough noise from uh, their customers that it's too much. So um, I, think, I think Rich made a great point. Competition is definitely driving the, uh, the price of, of our services way, way down. Um, and, um, you know, they, I think it's a good thing for everybody. People have come up with different schemes. There's no easy way to do this. Municipalities often provide roads to their citizens. They could be providing fiber using their own rights of way and reaching individual houses that way. And they could make it possible for lots of ISPs to light that fiber. Empire City Subway is actually a great example of an open access system. While they mainly sell to Verizon and they're owned by Verizon, they have to sell on a non-discriminatory basis access to any company that wants to want run wires through that. And really, the same principle should apply to the wires themselves. You rent the ducts from us. That's like you rent an apartment from the landlord. That's it. You know, who's going who's gonna to be living in the apartment? That's none of his business. One of the problems we have with internet policy is that we can't visualize what the internet is. 
So I've got a story for you. Um, when Thomas Jefferson wanted to show people in France just how uh, energetic and enormous the United States was, because French people believed the U.S. was degenerate, essentially, and that nothing could grow large here. He took an enormous moose to France and stuffed it and put it up in someone's parlor just because they could see how enormous and interesting the United States was. <laughs> so for me, okay, the internet can be a moose. I would say it would be a gazelle. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking like a cheetah, you know. It's, it's... Uh, whale and cheetah probably do it for me An octopus with a billion legs. A chameleon. It'd be a spider web. A worm? A worm. Or a beetle? I'm going to say a, a, a lamb or something, but the gazelle's a lot faster, or an impala. It can't take, uh, you know, it, it's very timid. It can't take a lot of punishment, doesn't like water, doesn't like electric, doesn't like uh, heat from steam. So it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of enemies that it has to be protected from. Thank you.